I am standing in a beautiful park. It's called Foothills Park, and we are here in Lake Oswego, and I'm with Kevin, and you work for the city of Lake Oswego, right? Yes, I do. So, Kevin, today we're going to be talking about sprinklers. It's, it's that time of year when, you know, we have to start thinking about watering our yards. Correct. And first of all, let's cover all of these older type above ground sprinklers that a lot of us have. Well, these are these are some of the more common ones that yeah. you're going to see, and there's you know there's as many sprinklers out there as there are people that buy them. It's true. <laughs> but this little guy here is a little whirly gig or spinner type, and this will throw sprinkler patterns out in a circular pattern or a square pattern, depending. What you have in your hand, William, is a is a what we call an impact sprinkler, and we call it an impact because the water well, impacts. That's right. Impacts. That makes and sense. And these are adjustable as well and so you can get half or full circles. Yeah. And then I think everybody has seen the old standby oscillator, yeah. which is a back and forth and you can adjust the distance and stuff. So these are the, some of the more common ones that are on people's yards. And what is, what is the perp, like why would I use this versus that versus, what is the reasons for that? Well, area coverage is a huge thing. Um, people in a larger yard might use that or people that are watering and they have a, different layout of the ground because you can you can adjust this is going to be a circle no matter where That's you put it pretty much what it's and be. so if I needed to water just this area down here and I set this in here I'd water the sidewalk okay. and we all know that's a waste yeah so this way you get a little bit more variance in pattern you have some control to. we do okay yes. so that makes perfect sense now if let's say that that we have a, a sprinkler system in ground you know something mm -hmm. that's already in there right I'm, I'm going to make some assumptions that that might be a little different, but to prove that, why don't we walk over to another place and take a look at those Sounds things. good. All right. Let's go. So now, Kevin, we are over in a, in a part of the park that actually has all in-ground systems Correct. here with different types. But, you know, the first thing I wanted to ask is, I, I think a lot of people might go, oh, well, that's the city of Lake Oswego. They probably paid a fortune for unique stuff. But this is all sprinkler systems anybody can buy and put in. Very common. Anybody that has... Um, an engineered sprinkler system put into their yard it will have these. These are not uncommon. You can get them at any store, any hardware store, any sprinkler facility. They're very common. So then tell me exactly what these are. What is their name? And we call them pop-up sprays, uh -huh. um, basically because they pop up out of the ground and spray out in a, in a fixed pattern. So unlike the the impact that we saw back over there, these stay consistent. They stay where they're at. Mm -hmm. yes. And then I would assume that there's also the availability of having ones that you put by a sidewalk so you get a half spray, all of that Right, stuff you can variate for. the nozzles. If you look here, you can see the different nozzles. The, the yeah. important thing, this time of year, it's a really good idea to fire these up and, and take a look at them and see what's going on with them. These things will go out of adjustment. And sure. so, you know, your half spray may be watering your, your, your trees or water in your house yeah and you need to adjust them back in or look for breaks or anything that's not working working properly. the way you want it because you want a very unique very um, even pattern of water being over spread out thing. now what about right across the aisle here what is the kind that is coming over here these are called rotors these are, are a pop-up just like this except they don't have a fixed pattern and you'll see they move back and forth based on their oh, adjustment okay. so they're okay. much like the impact except you don't have the impact. So you don't get woke up in the middle of the night with a sprinkler going so off. So it's just area. that real gentle, Very smooth much, yes. flow of water out. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, there is one more thing that we want to talk about, but that's in another part of the park. Right. So let's take a walk over there okay. and look at those. Terrific. So now, Kevin, we are at another place, and this is a, a different type of sprinkler. Tell me about it and why you like it. These are called multi-stream rotators. Um, every major manufacturer makes these in a varying, you know, shape or sizes. Yeah. But the beauty part of these are, is if you look out at that pattern, there's a multi-stream and a very fine stream. The bodies of these sprinklers right here are the exact same ones that we saw over there. Yeah. There's nothing different. All that has changed is this nozzle. Okay. And this nozzle is, these will fit oh. any sprinkler made. So you just take that old nozzle out and put okay. one of these in. So Automatic. you're not even undoing, you're really not Don't taking anything Don't have to dig anything up or okay. anything. Yeah. Okay, that's very clear. And now. by putting those on, it's an automatic 30% right off the bat. Of savings on of the water? Savings of water. They wow. are 30% less water right out of the gate. Well, and we're going to show people how they can actually test this theory. But first of all, I also wanted to cover when, when you, a sprinkler system, you have to make sure that the grass doesn't grow over. That happens a lot, doesn't it, Correct. in the wintertime? So what's here, the way you guys do it? Here it, it, it uh, Foothills Park, the, the staff comes around every year and they, they basically cut the grass away from the top of the nozzle here. Yeah. Because over time the grass grows up and it'll inhibit that nozzle from lifting up. Okay. It'll literally 
block the nozzle. So it's a good idea every spring to go out, clear that stuff away from your, no or your from your sprinkler body so that your pop up will rise up because you need that clearance in or order else to get you're just that water a tidal line exactly. Up. So now one of the things that we always talk about though, especially going into summer, is how much water do we use? These are a great little product to do that with. So we're going to set some of these around and then talk about how they fill up and why they fill up the Correct. levels they do, all right? Let's do that. All righty. So now, Kevin, I saw you, we got these great little cups from conservehuo.org mm -hmm. to measure water from sprinkler systems. I saw you placing them, but th what was the reason for the way you placed them? Well, if you, if you look at a sprinkler, there, there, there's two places typically where the water comes out at the greatest volume. One is back in by the head okay. itself, and one is at the farthest extent of the sprinkler. All right. And so to get an average, you want to get that water in a more representative spot sure, that's sure. going to be. So you set them in about one third from the end and about one third out from the top and that's going to give you the best average. Well Kevin I have to say we ran this now for five minutes and this is amazing to me. This is five minutes and this is the multi-stream rotator and why we like this is the fact that it puts the water out at such a low rate we don't get the the runoff into the streets. We yeah. don't. It, it puts it out at a rate that the the ground can actually absorb it, which is what we want. And that makes so much sense because when you see an overflow of sprinkling, all uh, especially gardeners know that there's that level where you just can't. It won't take anymore. Exactly. And it just runs away. So this does it at a rate you might have to run it longer, but it's actually doing what the sprinkler's supposed to be doing. Correct. And and in most cases, um, typical Americans will overwater 30 to 50 percent. Yeah. These, if you put them on the pop-up sprays that we saw over there, will automatically, right out of the gate, save you 30%. Wow. So wow. You, you shouldn't even have to change your programming. So, Kevin, you mentioned that the pop-ups use a lot more water than this, this system does, but I would imagine that those oscillator, older sprinklers, really use up water. Quite a bit. And, and the beauty part of this system is, is you can use it, it whether or not you have a an installed irrigation system or you use a hose. Yeah. It will still tell you how much water your sprinkler is putting down and give you that kind of control so that you know, based on need, how much water you need to put down, how many minutes. Perfect. So then, Kevin, once you have that number from putting all the cups together and getting that average, then you can use the weekly water number. Correct. And you can go to conserveh2o.org and you can get that number and they post it every week. We'll tell you how much water you need to add to your yard. So Kevin, you know, we really wanted to appreciate the time you took to give us this information and we also wanted to thank the City of Lake Oswego and the Parks Department here, especially out here at Foothills, which is really a beautiful park. Well, you know, there's, there's a lot of things that happen in the summertime and one of the things we have to do the most is water. We want to do it consciously and do it the best we can, not only to save money for ourselves, but to help our environment. So you can go to conserveh2o.org to pick these things up. You can also go to gardentime.tv. We will click you over to the Regional Water Providers Consortium and you can get all kinds of information about how to water your gardens effectively this summer. Thank you so much for your You're time, very Kevin. Welcome. Thank you.